So in television we had this evolution. I think this is really an interesting uh, view, I think, for you guys. You know, we're going from broadcast, and that was, you know, terrestrial broadcast, you know, some 40 years ago, to cable and satellite, and now we're going to the cloud. And this is the transition of broadcasting. And guess what happens in the cloud? That it's no longer dependent on the network. Right? It's dependent on the cloud network, but not on the satellite or cable network. Right? And these are all happening in parallel. Eventually, this sort of idea will shrink a little bit because clearly, when everything is digitized, it'll be cable, satellite, and the cloud. And of course, the interesting part is actually all three of those are connected. It's not an either or question. But clearly, you know, if you're looking at the future in terms of technology, you know, the, the fact that it takes 15 years to put a satellite into space to be able to actually broadcast to us, so that means that the broadcasters that, that put uh, satellites up, they have to actually anticipate what, what's going to happen in 15 years. Because that's how long it takes to get it up there. Right? Now, as you can see with the current discussions about uh, Time Warner and Comcast and NBC Universal, it's all of those three things together that will create the most powerful exponential growth. They actually fit together very nicely in the overall model. Again, like I said in the beginning, the side effect is that we're going to see prices drop. Because in this environment, the consumer gets more power. So, I mean, if you can watch Netflix for $7.99, I don't know what it is here, 10 euros or so, 100 kroners, I guess, or something like that, right? If you can watch that, why would you have cable television? Well, the answer is because your wife wants to have it, right? Or you want to watch, uh, you know, motorcycle racing or whatever, right? There's other reasons. But why would you pay 100 euros a month for something you don't use? Wouldn't you rather have a bunch of apps? So, I mean, clearly the price pressure is downward on this. But the number of users and the things that are happening there will make more than make up the difference. For example, what's not happening here is the entire social part. Nobody knows what I'm watching, which is a good thing, right? But I can't talk back to them. I can't engage. Nobody gives a shit what I say. Here, you know, every major TV show already has Twitter hashtags and, and all this stuff, right? It's mind-boggling what's happening with the social interaction. So that's really important. I think, therefore, the, the future of visual media is going to be around these things. And this is where I think cinema, for example, is fantastic in the future, because it's always about immersing, right? going inside of something. Anything where you can immerse yourself, you know, from restaurants to, uh, to uh, Roskilde, you know, is it, it's, it's a good business, right? Because you want to experience it. You want to go inside of something. So real life experience, embodiment, social context, collective consumption, like in a movie theater, technological scale.